My name is George Aguilar. I'm the training manager here at Clayval headquarters in Costa Mesa, California. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the maintenance and rebuild of our CRL and our 55L pilot. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, now let's get started on our CRL rebuild. So the first thing that I suggest that you do is visit our website. Uh, on our website, you will find a installation operation maintenance for the CRL. This provides you with um, operation and adjustment procedures, disassembly procedures, um, also gives you some troubleshooting tips on the bottom right hand side. On the back side of that you will find a parts list. This parts list is very useful. It gives you different spring ranges up on the top right. Different spring ranges, uh, the part numbers for those pilots and then just below that it gives you the PSI per turn uh, according to each CRL uh, pressure range. Whatever your spring range is, gives you your adjustment range for that. It also provides you with the description of all the part numbers along with a bubble view or a bubble uh, number on the left hand side there of each of those different parts along with the different part numbers. Those part numbers, included in those part numbers, you're going to find a couple of different repair kits. So there is a CRL repair kit along with a universal CRL repair kit. Now the CRL repair kit that we are going to be using today is going to be our universal one. The universal one will cover the CRL along with the CRL 60. So there's a couple different parts. If you're not sure exactly which one you have, we suggest that you get and go with the universal repair kit. All right, so we got a repair kit ready. Let's go ahead and get started on the disassembly of the CRL. So the first thing that we're going to do, the CRL has a middle sensing chamber. This middle sensing chamber here does rotate. You'll see on the back side here, there's our sensing port. So before we disassemble everything, we want to make sure that we have complete shutdown, not only in our pilot system, right, using the CK2s or the ball valves within the pilot system, if those are not available, you want to make sure you're shutting down your gate valves and there's no chance of, uh, of our valve opening up, that main valve opening up. So once you've got it complete, once you've confirmed isolation, before we disassemble our, our pilot here, we want to make sure that this sensing port gets put into that same, um, same area, the same location that it's, that it's currently in right now. So you want to make an indicator mark from the cover uh, from the cover to the sensing port and to the body to make sure that we're all lined up. Now we're going to remove this cover, the cap, uh, cover cap right there. We're going to loosen up the spring tension. So we're going to loosen up this jam nut. I got a 3 h driver. I'm going to go counterclockwise to loosen up the tension on this pilot. Now that I've loosened that up, we're going to remove these cover screws. They're either going to be flathead screws or they'll be a 5 30 seconds um, Allen head. So let's go ahead and remove those. Now these screws are not completely threaded through this sensing chamber. They're only threaded to the body so you don't have to remove them all the way or you don't have to unscrew them all the way. So obviously I've cheated a little bit here. I only got the four screws. So now this is why it's important that you um, back off the tension on this adjustment screw. If not, this cover has a tendency to kind of kick back a little bit. Um, or once you get all these screws off, this cover can pop off. So make sure that you re um, relieve the tension on this adjustment screw. Now, we got the cover. We got our spring with our two spring guides. And now we can remove this sensing chamber and stem assembly. Now you'll see as far as maintenance goes on the body, this area here is our support area. Some 400 wet dry sandpaper um, will take care of that, clean that up a little bit, clean up your seat area as well, a little inspection on, on how the body looks and the body's good to go. 
Now the rebuild of our sensing chamber and stem assembly. We have a lower stem nut here and we have one that's above on the top side. We are going to hold each one here. There we go. So there's our upper stem nut, our Belleville washer, our diaphragm washer, and our, and our diaphragm. There's that lower diaphragm washer as well. Now we can see the stem, we'll pop that out. All right, now we get to this um, sensing chamber. So you'll see there's an O-ring on the bottom here. This O-ring seals the body to the sensing chamber. So we will remove this O-ring. There's one, there's our first O-ring. In the middle of this sensing chamber, in the middle here, where the stem is guided, there is an O-ring as well. We wanna make sure that we don't forget this O-ring. There's O-ring number two. Now, cleanup of our sensing chamber now that the O-rings are out. Again, use that same uh, wet dry sandpaper. This is our diaphragm support area. Make sure your ports are clear. Little cleanup on that sensing chamber. This is good to go, we'll set that aside. Now, our stem. Sometimes this stem nut here is a little bit hard to get off. That's why you have this old diaphragm. You can hold that diaphragm there and use this. You wanna make sure you're not putting any vice grips or, or pliers on this stem. This stem does not come in the repair kit. You wanna make sure that you're holding this, protecting that stem while you back this off. So there, we've loosened up that stem nut, that lower stem nut, there's that. That gives us access to this disc. Again, this disc is gonna be in the repair kit. So there's our other repair kit uh, part, our diaphragm. Now we have our stem. There is an O-ring on each side of the stem. We're gonna go ahead and replace those. You can see how small these O-rings are. There's O-ring number three and the one that's on the, uh, on the top side, which is the same O-ring. There's O-ring number four. All right, a little bit of that cleanup, that same cleanup with that sandpaper on that stem, and we are good to go. Now I'll go ahead and grab our repair kit. Again, I'm using the universal repair kit here. So you are gonna find a couple extra O-rings. You'll get a couple of extra screws. We're not gonna use those. There's our new disc, all right? So there's our new disc. This disc assembly goes to our CRL60. We're not gonna be using that. But here's our new diaphragm with the set of O-rings. So now, let's get to the, um, that lower stem assembly. So we have a couple of small O-rings. We'll get those installed. A little food grade grease will help you out installing these, we suggest that. We got the lower and the upper O-rings. Let's get our new disc. We'll put that on with this nut here. Again, tightening this down, still you can remember you got that old diaphragm, we're gonna use that. You hold that down to make sure that you get this tight. There's our lower disc assembly on the stem. We're going to get our um, sensing chamber. All right, want to make sure this one had a couple of O-rings. We have that one in the middle and the one just down below. So here's our large um, body O-ring. Use some food grade grease to keep that on there. We have this large um, thicker O-ring here that's going to go in the middle. So we're going to squeeze that in there. And again, using this pick, we're going to guide it into the groove of where that O-ring sits. We'll flip it around, get it from the other side. 
there we go. So now that O-ring's sitting inside there. Now occasionally, if you are not sure how this goes back in, remember, with all clay valve parts, we have these record serrations. All right, anytime you see these record serrations, you gotta remember that that is what is touching the diaphragm. If, if I look at my body, you'll see there are no record serrations, meaning that there's no diaphragm touching this. If I look at this sensing chamber, I have an O-ring, that should tell you that's sitting on the body. And again, no record serrations. Record serrations on top. This lower stem assembly is gonna slide in from the bottom, just like that. All right, now, Again, our lower uh, diaphragm washer, again, there's those record serrations flat on the other side. So this, these record serrations are gonna be facing up. We got our new diaphragm. Now with Clayval, um, all of our diaphragms, there's no top or bottom, but it is our suggestion that the date stamp is facing up. So we're gonna put that date stamp facing up. Diaphragm washer, again, record serrations touching the diaphragm. And then we have a Belleville washer. This Belleville washer does have a slight concave. You want that concave facing down. It's similar to a pressure washer in the sense that once we get that stem nut on there and we flatten that out, all right, it'll flatten out that Belleville washer. So concave facing down. There's our stem nut. Remember, you're gonna have to hold both sides when you're tightening this up. So we're gonna hold that lower stem nut and tighten up the upper. There we go. Again, these O-rings would go to a CRL 60, so those are spare. Now, there's our sensing chamber and stem assembly. So, getting this back onto your body here, again, you're gonna look for those, for that indicator Right, we made that mark, that line of where, there they are. We wanna make sure that that line is lining up exactly to where that, sens that sensing port needed to be. Right, look for that Sharpie mark that you made previously. Now we're gonna get our cover and our spring guide and uh, spring and spring guides on. Now occasionally when you guys are uh, installing these back on your valves, Sometimes your CRLs are gonna be installed in this fashion here. And you gotta remember, how am I gonna hold all this and get the cover on without everything falling? One of the things that I like to do is once I've lined this up, I will take my cover and I take the adjustment screw and I'll take it about halfway in. Take your spring and your spring guides, put it inside the cover and then hold that with your thumb. And what you can do is when it's sitting on its side like this, you can, you can hold this assembly. And now that you got your spring and your spring guide and everything tight in there, you just go counterclockwise until your cover is flush with that sensing chamber. So a little trick to keep you, to keep that from, uh, those spring guides in that spring from falling out of place. Once you've done that, we get our screws in. There we go. We got our cap. And that's the rebuild of our CRL. Now for any adjustment um, or startup procedures, please visit our website for further videos on startup procedures for our CRL. Um, or for your specific valve, a, a relief valve, um, or whichever it is, different applications will require different startup procedures. But that concludes the video. Please visit our website for future videos and for more information. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day.